Veranda ES, where your dream becomes reality. Hello everyone, welcome to the daily current affair analysis from Veranda IAS. Today, we'll be going to see some of the important current affair topics from the dates of 13th, 14th and 15th of May 2023. And let us see the topics of the day. The first topic is inflation slips to an 18 month low of 4.7%. Then, Center prepares new model prisons act with focus on reform. Gaganyan parachutes for re-entry capsules sent to ISTRO facility in Bangalore. Explaining mitochondrial donation treatment, how a baby has three parents. So, these are the topics that we are going to discuss, friends. Not only that, we'll be also giving the timestamps in the description for you to skip easily. So, you can make use of that also and try to watch the complete videos for a detailed analysis and in-depth insights. So shall we proceed further? Moving on to the first topic, inflation slips to an 18 month low of 4.7%. So now let us see what is the news all about. India's retail inflation slid to an 18 month low of 4.7% in April. So which is much below the Reserve Bank of India set 6% tolerance threshold for price rise for the second successive month in this year and the decrease in retail inflation is a positive development for the economy definitely it is coming within our stipulated limits it could give the RBI more flexibility in its monetary policy decisions also now let us try to understand more factual details about it what is this retail inflation so it is also known as consumer price index or CPI inflation so remember retail inflation is also known as CPI inflation it is a rate at which the prices of goods and services that consumers buy for personal use increase over time so that rate is being calculated and is called as retail inflation or consumer price index inflation so this measures the change in the cost of a basket of goods and services that are typically purchased by household people like that of medical care, transportation, food, clothing, housing, etc. In this, you should understand the CPAs are of four types. One is CPA for industrial workers, CPA for agricultural laborers, CPA for rural laborers, CPA for urban, non-manual employees also. Among this, the first three, that is CPA for industrial workers, agricultural laborers, rural laborers, this is being compiled by the Labor Bureau. Don't forget, this is being compiled by the Labor Bureau, which is in the Ministry of Labor and Employment. Whereas the fourth one, that is the CPA for urban non-employees, non-manual employees is being compiled by NSO. NSO is National Statistical Organization. So, NSO is compiling in the Minister of Statistics and Program Implementation. So, this is the different bodies who are compiling. That is, CPA for industrial workers, CPA for agricultural laborers, CPA for rural laborers are compiled by Labor Bureau under the Ministry of Labor and Employment, whereas CPI for urban non-manual employees is being compiled by NSO in the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation also. Now, let us try to understand more factual details about CPI. The base year, that is the year with which we calculate as a reference for every year's calculation is based on 2011-12 CPI. So, in 2020, the Ministry of Labor and Employment also released the new series of consumer price index for industrial worker with the base year 2016. This you should note it on. That is, out of all the CPI, CPI for industrial workers, their, their uh, base year have been changed into 2016. Then the Monetary Policy Committee or the MPC, they still use the CPI data to control inflation. So in April 2014, the RBI adopted the CPI as its key measure of inflation also. Here you will be thinking, who, who are these MPC or what is this MPC? So this MPC or Monetary Policy Committee will be responsible for fixing the benchmark interest rate in India. So there will be, it will be, the committee will be uh, held uh, four times a year and this committee will be consisting of three officials of the RBI, then three external members who are nominated by the government of India also. But the RBI governor is the ex officio chairperson and has the right of a casting vote in case of a tie between the, these three people from RBI side and from the government side. So they constitute what we call it as MPC. Okay. Now, when you are learning about CPI, it is also very important for you to understand and learn about what is WPI or Wholesale Price Index. Now, let us see what is this Wholesale Price Index. So, it measures the changes in the prices of goods sold and traded in bulk by wholesale businesses to other businesses. 
And here you should understand that it is being published by the Office of Economic Advisor, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And the major criticism of wholesale price index against CPI is that the general public does not buy products at wholesale price. That is very correct, right? So when we go to any shops, we are getting or we are buying products at the retail price. Uh, whereas we are not buying any kind of a products from the wholesale right so if we are calculating the wholesale kind of an inflation like it is not the right margin or the right index to say what is the situation that or how much percentage is the rise or the fall because consumers are getting the uh, products or the consumers are getting the goods and services only in the cpi okay so that is why we can see that cpi is most commonly used for the c Moving on to the next topic, Center prepares new model prisons act with focus on reform. So the Center has recently finalized a comprehensive model prisons act of 2023 to replace the prisons act of 1894, the prisons act of 1900 and the transfer of prisoners act of 1950. Now let us see what are the some of the stipulated highlights of the model prisons act 2023. So it says that the prison will be viewed as a reformative and correctional institutions. Okay, reformative and correctional institution with a focus on transforming and rehabilitating inmates back into society as a law abiding citizens rather than considering it as a hell. They are being viewed as a reformative and correctional institutions for creating a law abiding citizens. Then it will address the gaps in existing act by providing guidance on the use of technology in prison management making provisions for parole, furlough, remission to prisoners to encourage good conduct. That means such kind of an incentivization will be given for the uh, inmates for uh, like being or do some good conducts in the society. It will also have special provisions for women and transgender inmates in the jail also. And another provision is that it, it will have security assessment and segregation of prisoners, individual sentence planning, grievance redressal, establishment of a prison development board and also that means within inside the prison there will be a lot of grievances of the people who are who is there to hear that grievance so that is where uh, it is being said that a prison development board with a proper grievance redressal mechanism will be created then what it has provision for the use of technology in prison administration such as video conferencing with courts and scientific and technological interventions in prisons properly not only that it all it will also include provisions for the punishment of prisoners and jail staff for using prohibited items like mobile phones in jails which we, which is very commonly which we like it is a uh, kind of a secret which everyone knows right uh, like the use of mobile phones in the jails then high security jails will be created and also the open jails will be established open and semi-open kind of a jails will be established it has provisions for legal aid to prisoners parole premature release to incentivize good conduct also so such kind of a things will be also done so that uh, the prisoners will be like uh, uh, will be incentivized to do good conduct in the society it focuses on vocational training and skill development of prisoners to facilitate their reintegration into the society so since they are uh, there in the jail they they'll be also taking part in some kind of an economic activities we can see in many parts of the country there is called as uh, like a jail restaurants that is the jail people or the inmates of the jail will be making some kind of a uh, like a food products for and it will be sold to the society so they are again gaining a skill right so once they are out in the society itself they will be they will not be left alone or they they will be always equipped with the skill so that they will be getting a continuous life once they are released back into the society moving on to the next topic gaganyan parachutes for re-entry capsule sent to istro facility in bangalore let us see what is the news about so indigenously developed parachutes for the safe return of the capsule that will carry astronauts under the proposed gaganyan program are set to undergo fitment tests at the istro facility in bangalore so who all developed this parachute for re-entry? The Aerial Delivery Research and Development Establishment called as ADRDE, the Agra Base Laboratory under the Defense Research and Development Organization. They have developed the parachutes for India's manned space flight program. Now let us understand more about Gaganyan mission. So this project demonstrates our human space flight capability by launching a crew of three members to an orbit of 400 kilometers for a three-day mission 
and bringing them back safely to earth by landing in Indian sea waters. That means we are launching humans into the space, but at the same time, we are returning them back safely also in the Indian sea waters as a capsule. So for the capsule to re-enter into the uh, Indian atmosphere, uh, re-enter into the atmosphere and to land in the sea waters of Indian Ocean, we need what parachutes. So that parachutes were recently tested. That is why this, this uh, context is in news. Then the first trial for Gaganyaan is being planned by the end of this year or next year. This will be followed by sending Vyomitra, which is a humanoid, and then with a crew on board. So this mission will be the first of ISRO's human spaceflight missions. And before that, only US, Russia, and China are the three countries to have conducted human spaceflight. So ISRO's geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle, that is DSLV Mach 3, that is a three-staged heavy lift vehicle, will be the one uh, going with the Gaganyan mission also. Now let us understand what is the significance of this Gaganyan mission. It is a great example for India's aim of self-reliance. That is, it is completely in line with our vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat and also our Make in India initiative. And also, it is a great boost for our R&D that is there in India. That is, it will definitely enhance our R&D and also our sustained and affordable human as well as robotic program will be delivered in front of the world from India. Then focus on regional needs. That is right now we are having international space station. But understand one international space station is not enough for uh, for meeting the requirements of globally. So one ISS is not enough for the global needs. So we need a such kind of a, a more advancement with respect to the domain of space exploration, strengthening international partnerships. So through sharing of challenging and peaceful goals, we'll be able to partner further with respect to or being as a more developed nation in front of the global scenario. Then what are the challenges we have before that environmental hazards because most of the astronauts who are going for the same will uh, have to uh, face a lot of environmental hazards because of the lack of gravity in the space, atmosphere, danger of radiation, everything. Then the medical issues for astronauts because of the microgravity and isolation. Then the technological challenges that we are facing, the aerospace technological challenges because we are just like a startup, right? ISRO. So it is a kind of a new domain that we are entering with our pride. So we can see that it is going to have certain kind of a, uh, certain kind of a challenges with respect to our aerospace domain also. So this is very, very important for our news. So we can see that this Gaganyan, Gaganyan represents India's determination to explore the frontiers of space and also it will showcase its technological powers on a global scale. But it will also inspire our future generation and contribute to India's overall scientific and technological progress in the near coming years. Moving on to the next topic, explaining mitochondrial donation treatment, how a baby has three parents. So recently, a baby has been born in UK using MDT, that is micro mitochondrial donation treatment, which involves using the DNA of three people in an effort to prevent children from inheriting incurable diseases through mitochondria. Now let us see how it works. That is, by combining the sperm and egg of biological parents along with the mitochondria from a donor's egg. So we'll see in the next slide how this thing works. Then mutations in mitochondria or the damaged mitochondria because of the mutations are the main reason for the like inheritance uh, for the for the diseases which are being inherited from the mother. So we can see that these damaged or the mutations in mitochondria can be inherited only from the mother and can affect all the children a woman has. Approximately one in five k or ten k children are born each year with a mitochondrial disease. Also, now let us see what is the process behind it. So here you can see this is the mother's egg, right? The, that is a biological mother's egg and it has damaged mitochondria. Here you can see the red, red dots. These red, red dots are the ma damaged mitochondria. So this healthy nucleus is extracted from the mother's defective eggs. And this nucleus is being sent to the donor's egg. So there are, a donor will be there and the healthy nucleus from the biological mother's egg is extracted and is being re replaced with the donor's egg. So where what will happen here? In the donor's egg, the uh, mitochondria will be very, very healthy, but the nucleus will be replaced by the biological mother's healthy nucleus. So the nucleus is removed from the healthy donor egg and replaced with the mother's nucleus. Now we can see that the nucleus is also healthy, the mitochondria is also healthy, but the mitochondria actually belongs to the donor's. 
is it clear ah then this egg with the mother's nucleus with biological mother's nucleus and donor's mitochondria is getting fused with respect to the sperm that is egg carrying genetic material of two women is fertilized by male sperm and implanted into mother and thus we can see that three biology three parents are are, are said to have that means uh, the biological mother's nucleus healthy nucleus is being implanted into the uh, donors egg after replacing the nucleus with the biological mother's nucleus and also we can see right now it is having healthy mitochondria healthy nucleus and also the sperm will be injected for uh, fertilization okay so this is how that process is being carried out but it is only in the experimentation stages it is not yet being popular in the market moving on to the question of the day which of the following statement best describe the objective of india's gaganyaan mission option a to establish a permanent human settlement on the moon option b to conduct extensive scientific experiment on mars option c to send indian astronauts into space and demonstrate india's capability in manned mission option d to explore the possibilities of asteroid mining and resource extraction so from the description we already said that the main aim or the objective of india's gaganyaan mission is to send indian astronauts into space and demonstrate india's capability in manned mission so the right answer to this question is option c okay yes so i hope today's topics are clear to everyone so please do give your comments and suggestions in the comment section below uh, thank you so much unless and until we meet next time this is prince j signing off all the best thank you